Missionary Q&A. When, if ever, is the best time to pursue missions as a family with children? This is a great question that we took on our Ask a Missionary series uh, during a recent missions live stream that we put on. And this is episode number 295 of Missions Incorporated, the podcast of Practical Missions Cohort, which is a ministry focused exclusively in the country of Italy to evangelize, make disciples, and plant churches. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and share this Q&A, uh, but before we do that, I'll go ahead and run our intro, mention a couple brief announcements, as well as some things that uh, are good for us to remember about the country of Italy and why we do missions work here in this country. So thank you for joining us, and uh, let's roll the intro and get into our, our episode for today. All right, again, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time, my name is Jesse Schreck, and I'm a missionary uh, here in the country of Italy since 2007, serving full-time uh, in the work of evangelism, disciple-making, and planting biblical churches. Um, a little bit about Italy, maybe we can jump into that before we go ahead and uh, look at a couple brief announcements. Uh, just These are really good things for us to remember. When it comes to missions in Italy and why do we uh, labor here in the country of Italy, why is there need for the gospel in the country of Italy, uh, it's good for us to know. There's 60 million souls, 60 million people that live today in the country of Italy. And among those 60 million, uh, 90% or so are Roman Catholic. It's a cultural thing. Everyone in the country of Italy is Roman Catholic. If you're born here, if you're an Italian person, uh, that's all that there is, basically. Uh, so it's, it's very much a part of the culture here, and most people are. Yet only 5% of those 60 million practice Roman Catholicism. Most Italians today want nothing to do with the Roman Catholic Church. Have It's strictly a cultural thing. In other words, very few people are even practicing this religion. In addition, we can say less than 1% of the people here in the country of Italy are evangelical, with a healthy, good understanding of what the gospel is, how salvation works, how one can be right with God, how to receive eternal life, and so on, what it means to be a Christian. Less than 1% today are evangelical. And we can also say this, 32,000 of the 34,000 cities and towns here in the country of Italy today have no evangelical witness. If you can imagine, less than 1% of the people are even evangelical. Uh, that affects every city and town as well. Their witness there is very, very little. The Italian church, uh, evangelical church today is, is small and it's scattered. Uh, many people have to drive well over an hour just to go and be part of a, a healthy church uh, here in the country of Italy. And uh, we could also say this 90%, important fact here, 90% of the long-term missionaries that do come to the country of Italy to serve and, and, and serve the Lord Jesus and preach the gospel and so on, uh, they leave within just four years. It's a staggering statistic. Uh, they hit the spiritual wall, so to speak, in the country of Italy, uh, overwhelmed with all the bureaucracia and many different things that make life in Italy actually quite challenging. And within four years, 90% of the missionaries who do come uh, with right intentions and so on uh, just can't make it through even four years, and they're gone, unfortunately. Uh, so these are some of the staggering statistics. Oh, I have one more here uh, as well. Uh, the three fastest growing religions today in the country of Italy are the occult, Islam, and I classify atheism as a religion as well because they have their own belief system. Uh, so those are the, the main growing religions here in the country of Italy today. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, share a couple announcements uh, as we uh, transition into our the Q&A that we wanted to, to share with everybody today. All right, so our, oh, wrong button, sorry. Uh, too many buttons here on my screen. Uh, all right, our announcements are, uh, number one, we have uh, vision trips are available. If uh, you and a group of three or four, maybe uh, other people, would like to come and uh, learn more about the PMC ministry, learn more about the context here in Italy, and and get a Christian perspective on the country of Italy and how to uh, to enter into the culture here and, and have an impact for Jesus and see long-term uh, ministry work happen and so on and be fruitful, uh, contact us. You can also check out practicalmissions.org forward slash vision hyphen trip hyphen info vision trip info uh, to learn more but this could be a great opportunity in the summer or the spring or the fall uh, for you and a, a small group from your church to come out for four four nights and five days and experience things here in the field and take that back with you to share with folks at your church our next announce announcement is if you have a question of your own related to missions <clears throat> and missions work in italy etc church in italy these kinds of things you can also go to uh, speakpipe.com forward slash practical missions cohort, and you can leave us a voice message with your question, and you can be featured on one of our podcast episodes, and we can go ahead and answer your question. Uh, in addition, you can join us uh, otherwise uh, at this uh, up next a uh, live stream event that we're putting on, a missions live stream event uh, called uh, Defining Biblical Missions. That'll be the topic that we're, we're 
covering in the next one. It was supposed to be last Saturday. My wife was sick and there's all kinds of complications. Still sick and I'm having to juggle all kinds of things like take care of kids and so on. And uh, we might be doing it tomorrow, This uh, which would be Thursday, uh, the 19th of January. It might be Friday. Uh, it might even be Saturday. We'll have to see. Just stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel uh, for that event. But it's uh, we'll be tackling this topic here, defining biblical missions. The content, the lesson uh, that we're going to be sharing live is later going to be featured in our missions course at the PMC Academia as well. Uh, but in any case, during this missions live stream, you'll also have a chance if you if you had any questions related to what we talked about or to missions in Italy, you'll be able to leave a comments uh, in, in the comments section, and we're going to have a live uh, Q and A time as well at the end of our uh, hour and fifteen minutes or so together at the missions live stream. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for PMC and uh, to get notified when that actually does go live, uh, which should be, it could be tomorrow, it could be Friday, it could be uh, even Saturday. Uh, so we'll just have to play that one by ear for now because of the complications here on the mission field. Uh, that's all for our announcements today. Uh, so without any further ado, we'll go ahead and, and, and look at this question that we had for today and, um, and let you hear the answer that we gave during the last uh, missions live stream. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of the ministry. And thanks for being a listener as well to uh, the Missions Incorporated, the podcast of PMC. God bless you. Ciao, ciao. Here's a question related, looks like, to the family. When, if ever, is the best time to pursue missions as a family with children. Okay. When, if ever, is the best time to pursue missions as a family with children? I think it's a good question right away because, uh, as we mentioned earlier, singles, not even a question. Whenever you want to go and you have the blessing of the church and you're sent, you can go. Easy to navigate. When you're operating with an entire family, depending how many people are in the family, everything is much different. You're no longer on a quick kayak in and out. Now you're on a big ship, a big boat. It takes a lot of energy to get that boat moving. It's not easy to quick turn around and change your mind. You have to, there's a lot of planning that goes into and a lot of execution of tasks to become a missionary, to get all the right paperwork, to get sent, to get there, to get set up with a whole family. It's, it's very complex. Um, but is the best time to pursue missions as a family with children? I don't, I don't think there is a best time. On one hand, we could say that it's always the best time and it's never the best time. That's just kind of how it is, if you know what I mean. So uh, it's always going to be complex. It's never going to be easy, right? So whenever you can, whenever you have that calling, you discover it. You have the confirmation from your elders at home. You have the support that you need. Uh, you've applied. You've been accepted. God has opened the door. Uh whether the kids are little or whether they're old, it really doesn't make a difference at that point. My only counsel would be is when you do need to get over to the mission field to get set up, it seems to me to be the best practice, have the, the husband go, the dad go, go there in advance, a month or two in advance, get as much possible set up and ready to go so when the family comes or you go back, get the family and then you come, you bring them right in, you have a place to stay established, you have all that you need and they can settle into a new life and begin uh, uh, living in another culture. If you would all come at the same time, now everything is chaotic, educating, homeschool, everything is kind of up in the air for, it just can really mess things up for a couple of years it would take to kind of recover from all that. So it does seem to make a lot of sense though, uh, when there are children involved, as much as possible, you all come together when you're scouting out, when you're learning, you meet the other missionaries, all that as a family. But when it comes time to move then, have the husband come first, get as much set up as possible, then go back, bring the family over together and they can settle right in. Seems to be uh, the best practice in my, uh, in my view. Thank you for watching this highlight of Missions Incorporated, the podcast of Practical Missions Cohort. If you've been encouraged or blessed, uh, we encourage you to like it or share it or subscribe to our channel. This helps others to learn about the ministry and uh, the different ways that they can get involved here in the country of Italy. And if you or your church would like to know more about how to personally get involved and impact Italy for the gospel, visit practicalmissions.org.